Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another trade reaction video here at the Hockey Writers. I uh, yeah, like we said, like I said yesterday in our last one, we keep do, we're doing these every day, it seems. So I'm um, welcome, welcome Shane Sini back to the panel. Uh, at the, I said before recording, at this rate, just be the co-host of this show. So <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to start charging your rent, <laughs> right? Eh? Um, but yeah, we're we're talking trades. We're getting really close to the trade deadline. It seems like GMs are just keep trying to get it done before uh, that day, but we keep getting them. And this one's a surprise. I mean, this one we didn't we didn't anticipate. And this one, Vancouver Canucks acquiring Philip Horonic from the Detroit Red Wings for a pretty substantial package, a first round pick that they got in the New York Islanders trade for Bo Horvat, and that's a conditional pick. Now that condition will go to the Red Wings will have that now. Um, and a 2023 second round pick. And the Canucks got a fourth round pick in 2023 as well. So pretty big um, coming back. Um, before I give my thoughts on it, uh, Shane, what what is your initial reaction to this one? I mean, like I said, it's it came out of left field. Um, you know, talking to Devin, who who's on the grind line, he said that there was talk about it being in a potential Horvat trade. But so it seems like, Maybe they talked. So what do you think about this uh, heroic trade? Huge surprise for me. I wasn't expecting either of these clubs to make make a trade like this. So um, to me, it's the Canucks. They're retooling. It's, uh, you know, bringing in a right-handed defenseman that they they desperately need. Um, Luke Shen obviously is gone now, too. So there's some minutes there for the rest of this year. Uh, heroic signed for next year, too. So um, look for him to, you know, maybe get some power play minutes and hopefully put up some points there. Well, I mean, from a Canucks set, I, I don't know. I I'm kind of in the middle of on this trade. I, I like Koronik. I mean, he's a very good defenseman. I, you know, we can play in the top four definitely has played in the top four in Detroit. Um, you know, right-hand shot, which is what the Canucks have been looking for. I mean, like you said, they traded Luke Shen. Uh, they need a guy that can play, um, minutes. I don't know if he can, if he'll fit with uh, Quinn Hughes at all. Um, you know, he's a relatively good two-way defenseman. Um, you know, going through, there was a joke about he only scored empty netters in the past uh, <laughs> on grind line, but you know, his, his year this year has been really good. He's already tied his career high in points with 38 career high in goals with nine. I mean, his next goal and his next point will be career highs, um, new career highs. So, I mean, it, you know, he's having a really good year. Is it an outlier year? I don't know. Um, what do you think? Do you think Koronik is, is this just a, a good year for him? And he's just going to kind of regress back to the mean? Or is it, I'm hoping it's a sign of things to come because the Canucks right. need another good right-hand shot defenseman that can pair up with Quinn Hughes or even just be in the top four. Yeah, I, I see him I see him being a pretty steady, consistent defenseman. I don't think it's, necessarily an outlier year um he's going to get huge minutes with vancouver if he can first he's got to get healthy they've yeah. traded for a defenseman who's not even healthy at the moment and gave up so much so i think he can sustain this and um yeah i would i would think that he's going to get his opportunity in vancouver to shine and from all accounts to me it looks like he's a, a capable you know top four defenseman yeah i i, I mean I, I like the trade um the player coming back i don't necessarily like the price that they the it's money the cost yeah. that they gave up for it a first round pick okay second rounder added in is kind of what i'm kind of iffy on i mean it's a 2023 second round so in my mind they're giving up two first round picks mm -hmm. because of the fact that this draft is so deep a second rounder can be the equivalent of a first in other drafts so they kind of give up two first round picks in my mind at least um, you know, now they still have their first, obviously they still have their own, um, that's high up. It's going to be a high one uh, unless Hirona can come back and help them win games. They seem to be winning right now. And this is what the Canucks always do. They always win at the end of the year when they could get a really good pick. Yeah. Um, frustrating uh, for sure. Oh, well, <laughs> but uh, on, on the surface, I, I do like the trade. I think the player coming back is going to be pretty good. I mean, 25 years old, like I said, He's in that area where he's just going to enter his prime. And I was actually surprised looking at his age. I thought he was closer to 30 because he has been around for a bit. Yeah, um, what's he, 24, 25? 25. So, I mean, he's he's still relatively young. He hasn't hit his prime. 
I don't like the plus minus numbers looking at them, but plus minus is, is a flawed stat. I agree. Um, that plot minus 38 year. I don't do not like, but I mean, he's plus eight this year and this is on a better Detroit Red Wings team. So all in all, I, I do like the trade. I think it's going to end up being pretty good for the Canucks. It's not a bad contract. Uh, just a little over $4 million. So, I mean, um, I'll get the exact figure here. 4.4. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's not a bad contract. It's not like a, a Tyler Myers or uh, Oliver Ekman Larson. And it's not long-term either. So, I mean, he's, like you said, he got one more year. We'll see what the Canucks can, uh, what he'll demand on the market. If he has another good year like this one, he may get up to the Tyler Myers numbers, yes. 6 million or whatever. Yep. So, but he's an RFA as well. So, I mean, Canucks still have control over his contract. Yeah. Yeah. Which so, is probably why the, the extra picks are in there, just like that team control. But yeah, yeah. there's still a big question mark, and that's a lot to give up, especially in a deep draft. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, the Canucks do like they do need the right hand shot defense defensemen. So they could have got that in the draft as well. But Heronik's a proven guy. He he is he is an NHL defenseman. So we'll see how he fits into the group. And um, it's going to be exciting to see another new player on the Canucks blue line because haven't had one in a while that uh, is this young that's coming in. Um, so we'll see what happens with him. All right. The next big trade that happened, it happened, it was rumored last night um, that uh, Valsev Gavrikov and uh, Val, um, Jonas Corposalo was traded or traded to the LA Kings um, for Jonathan Quick. Uh, and you know what? One theme, before I get your thoughts on it, one theme I seem to see around the trade trades right now is players that have been with the franchise for a long time yep. getting traded. So what do you think about this trade? Um, you know, the Kings getting a goaltender, not a solid starter, but, uh, and then a really good uh, top four defenseman. Yeah. For the Kings, it's a complete blindside. Really. I don't think quick saw this coming. He's 37. Yeah. He's a pending free agent. He's been there his whole career, won a cup, the whole nine yards. So from all accounts, what I've heard is he was pissed. So <laughs> um, Rob Blake, even talked to Drew Doughty and Anzi Kopitar after the game. And both of those guys were really disappointed and shocked. So tough, tough situation for the Kings right now. No doubt about that. Um, from the Blue Jackets perspective, you know what? They get the first and third that they were looking for. Um, as far as quick goes, they're going to trade him. It sounds like yeah. he's off to Vegas. So, um, you know, that'll, that'll come to fruition here in the next couple of days. But for me, the Kings really – it's a it's a head scratcher. It's a head scratcher, and I'm not sure that Quick really deserved this kind of exit out of the franchise. To be honest, yeah, well, I mean he's he's a franchise icon. I mean he's he's leads in a lot of categories in you know save percentage, goals against average, all those major stats for goaltenders. He's a big deal, and yeah, I could see him him being a little bit angry. Not a little bit. It seemed like a lot. <laughs> he was really yeah. angry that he's getting traded. And, um, you know, he's you know, going to Vegas. I mean, that's going to be interesting to see if that all comes out. That is, but um, yeah, I don't know. The Kings, the Kings need goaltending, but is Corpus Allo really the answer? I mean, he, he hasn't yes. been that good for a while. His save percentage, I think it's like nine thirteen, which is just a little bit under the league average. So mm -hmm. he's, he's got a decent track history and he's only at 1.3 million. Yeah. Which it's is not great. But at this point in time, like they just need results and they need wins. And Phoenix Copley's there and he's been on a crazy tear. They got Cal Peterson in the minors, which was supposed to be their yeah, goalie yeah. of the future, but that quickly changed. So um, sounds like Rob Blake just had to switch gears really quickly and pulled the trigger. And uh, obviously he's kind of ruffled some feathers there in LA. <laughs> yeah. What do you think Gavrikov brings to their defense? I mean, uh, he's, you know, he was rumored to go to a few places, Boston, Edmonton, um, solid two-way defenseman. I mean, the Kings are relatively good in that area defensively. So they really add a, a really good uh, mid, you know, he's not, again, not an old defenseman. He's, he's in that good range. Um, what do you think he brings to the Kings defense? Yeah, I think Kings fans will see a lot of Jake Muzzin in his game. He's kind of that top four guy that does a little bit of everything. He's not overly offensive and not superior defensively he kind of gives 
a little bit of, uh, of everything. So to me, he's going to go in there and really solidify their left side. They have a ton of depth on the right yeah. side of their defense. So they needed a, a lefty pretty bad. So to me, he'll go in there and play top four minutes and probably be a big part of their or penalty kill. And uh, like I said, Kings fans will probably see a lot of Jake Muzzin in his game. Yeah, that's a very good comparison. I think he definitely and and Muzzin was really good for for a lot of the championship teams too. So yeah. we'll see what all that kind of kind of goes with him. All right, and a couple other not to say minor, but there were there were players that were kind of rumored to be on the move. Uh, Shane Gossis Bear finally gets traded because there was rumors he was going to be traded last trade deadline. Um, stayed in Arizona. He was traded to the Carolina Hurricanes for a third round pick. In 2026, he's going to keep pushing for, forward, seeing some 2026 picks moving. Um, what do you think Gosses Bear brings to the Hurricanes? I mean, they already got a pretty good defense already. Yeah, it's it's all offense all day long with Gosses Bear. So the Hurricanes were a little bit, you know, they wanted to add and they had the money to do it. So they still have a little bit of money left and who knows what will come. But Gosses Bear is a power play specialist. He's a guy that's you know, not going to do too, too much defensively or, you know, physically, but uh, when it comes to moving the puck and, and chipping in on the offense, he's one of the best to do it. Right. Um, finally, um, the Colorado Avalanche addressed, I don't know if they addressed their second line center spot with this move, but he's going to be in the mix. Lars Eller going to the Colorado Avalanche from the Washington Capitals for a 2025 second round pick. Um, what do you think for Eller? I mean, Colorado Avalanche, they did a few of these trades last trade deadline. They worked out pretty well. What do you think uh, Eller will bring? Yeah, they've been looking for a center for most of the year, obviously, since Kadri left for Calgary. But um, not a whole lot offensively. He's more of that shutdown guy now, you know, a little bit later on in his career. Pending free agent, not much risk there um, as far as, you know, what if it's low risk, high reward type of deal. So to me, I was kind of surprised Eller's played like, almost a hundred playoff games. So yeah, yeah. he's seasoned, he's been there. He knows what it takes to win. And um, yeah, I think Colorado did well just to kind of, you know, give away just a mid round pick. I think they were in on Ryan O'Reilly and I think they were in on Jonathan Taves. Mm. So once those, once O'Reilly was off the board and Taves wasn't going anywhere, I think that's when they shifted their focus. And also Monaghan, I think may have been on their radar right. too, but yeah. he's been, you know, hurt and they're not sure with him. So that didn't happen. And I don't even know if Monaghan's going to be traded at all because of the injury issues or in right now. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, Eller could be an under the radar move that uh, another one by, uh, by Sackick. I mean, he's not the GM anymore, but <laughs> he has his hands in there. For so, sure. I mean, yeah, we'll see. I, like you say, last season, a lot of those moves were really, I mean, tiny. They weren't, they didn't, you know, rock the, you know, rock the news world when they were made. Um, but Eller could be a, a big piece in the playoffs. Like I said, he's been in the playoffs. He's he's played there. Um, another uh, Montreal connection, too, because he was a Montreal Canadiens draft pick way back when. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Shane, for coming on the show again Thanks, and talking trades. And we'll talk more in the next couple of days, and we'll have a full recap trade deadline show after the trade deadline as well. Um, but yeah, keep locked on hockeybears.com. We got tons of pieces coming out every day and uh, lots of analysis uh, coming on all these trades um, on the site as well and YouTube, of course. So make sure you're keeping, keeping an eye on the site and the YouTube channel and um, we'll see you next time.